All right. During the late 1800s, there was a 33 degree Mason, an American writer by the name of Albert Pike. Okay. Right now you can find his statue one block away from the white house, Washington, DC. Albert Pike. He so happened to, to, to have been Jewish. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but it's good to know because why every time something happens when it comes to our people, usually the religion or what we believe is brought up. Okay. Because obviously the, the media believes and others believe that there's some tie in to someone's ideology or their impact on society based on the religion they follow. So, and I'm going to use Israelites as an example. Anytime there's something negative that comes out where someone who believed they're Israel uh, typically a black person, they would automatically try to promote that as the all to end all of any negative because an Israelite did it. But we, but we cannot do the same. We can't say, well, hold up. Is there something within their religion that allows systematic racism and oppression and destruction on a people? I don't know. I, I don't claim to know. But I thought since they would like to bring that up, then when it comes to other races of people, we need to start going into their religion to find out if there's something within that ideology, you know, adverse to society or our people. Right. But let's digress. Albert Pike, he wrote uh, he wrote uh, a book called Morals and Dogma. OK. Albert Pike was an American author, poet, uh, orator, editor, lawyer, and jurist who served as an associate justice of Arkansas Supreme Court in exile from 1864 to 1865. He died in Washington, eight, Washington, D.C., 1981. He was hurled as someone to be remembered, obviously, because they have a statue of him one block away from the White House. Now, now I'm not here to give any of us or talk about this particular man's life. It's just something that he said, which was, uh, I would say, prophetic. Let's see. It was prophetic. Let's get it here. Let's get it here. I think I have it. One moment. Let's get it. One moment. Let me see. Right here. Albert P Pike made this quote from his words under morals and dogma in the late 1800s. He stated as a 33 degree Mason, we shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist, we shall provoke a great social cataclysm. Now I'm going to highlight these words here so you can see it. We, so obviously this is more than just Albert Pike. Now I'm going to let you, it's open to discussion on who the we are, but Hey, again, his statue is one block away from the White House. We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist. We shall provoke a great social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute atheism. Atheism. So they had an agenda to bring the earth into unbelief. To create an atheistic society, which now more people would claim to be spiritual than Christians. When someone say, well, I'm not really a Christian or I don't believe in Christ or the Bible. I'm spiritual. They're Satanist. What they, they don't want you to hold them down to any moral standard as to why they claim in their spiritual but they still would like to be respected as one who believe in God. So you have to watch these words, these satanic words out there. 
that Satanists use. Well, I don't have, because if they say that they are under a particular religion that would hold that person to what? A moral standard. But the trick is to tell you that they're spiritual. And by doing so, you don't know exactly what they, be they believe and what their moral standards are. Okay. Satanists are spiritual. Okay. So let me make it clear. It says we shall unleash the nihilists and atheists and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute atheism, atheism, right? Atheism, the origins of savagery, the origins of savagery, making people inhumane and or savage like animals and most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the people will be forced to defend themselves. So they want the citizens of the world on the defense in a defensive posture. Forced to defend themselves against the world minority of the world revolutionaries and will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitudes dissolution with Christianity whose spirits will be from the moment without direction and leadership. So the outcome from setting up an atheistic system is to do what? To make it where the people are without any spiritual guidance before Christ returns. And anxious of an ideal, but without knowledge where to sin, it's adoration. Now, mind you, Albert Pike was a Satanist. It says, without direction and leadership and anxious for an ideal, but without knowledge where to send its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out into public view. Now, a lot of you don't know that the Satanists behind closed doors, the Knights Templar of the of Rome, worship Lucifer as the Baphomet, part male and part woman, a Maphrodite, male and female, female, which would be determined today as transgender beings. So a lot of you are waiting for somebody to walk out of the white house with horns on, but it's the idea of the Baphomet that would become the norm accepted amongst society. This is what Albert Pike was talking about. The acceptance of Lucifer out front. So when you see the flag, when you see trans, when you see all these other sexualities, understand this plan was well thought out by the Satanist well before our current time. It says a manifestation which will result from a general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, that means the belief in anything, but conquered and exterminated at the same time, causing a conflict before the two, because why? What? A nation divided against itself cannot stand, and eventually Satan destroys everyone. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? when it comes to reading the Bible. The first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but yet no one 
No religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited.